How you doing YouTube, Facebook world? Thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. Um, we're blessed with another day. And I'm just doing what I've been, what I've been called to do, as far as preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and, um, and spread His word. And you know, there's so much talk about if the Bible is is real. If these words that that are contained in this book are they real and there's so much evidence around us that is simply amazing and God Almighty he made it like that on purpose and that's so that we can know that there is a, a ultimate you know creator ultimate source the creator of, of everything. So we can wonder and marvel after the things that he has created. You know, we look at this earth as itself. We look at the ocean and the water, how, you know, it never overflows. The ocean never, you know what I'm saying, over, you know, the overflow as far as filling up. It always stays at where it's supposed to stay at. We look at, you can look at the small things like a caterpillar. I mean, it's just simply amazing. The sun, how everything rotates. The moon, the cycles, and the signs and the season that Genesis talk about. Of the reason of him putting um, these things in the order that they are in. Because God is a God of order. And everything is set up the way he wants it set up. Because everything was made perfect. And then sin came in and, you know, kind of messed that up for, um, for mankind. But, um, you know, through his grace... Through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice that he made on the cross, we are able to be redeemed and brought back to God the Father, who is holy, holy, holy. And it's not that God doesn't love us, because he does love us. That's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. It's just that he is who he is, and he cannot have sin around him like that. So, I want to take a quick look at some facts. So, I'm going to share a quick video. I want you to watch this video and then we're going to get into the scriptures. So, we're going to set the tone with what scientists have um, recently discovered. And then we're going to see what the Bible has to say about that. Well, it's these types of stories that the evening news is definitely not going to be delivering to your living room. Scientists, amazingly, have discovered something truly remarkable, and they've done so in Earth's atmosphere. Yes, as you read the title of this video and you clicked on it, they have discovered an invisible shield around the Earth, and they are baffled at how it's formed. Now, it's no mystery that... We have the Van Allen radiation belts. These are two donut shaped rings above the Earth that are filled with high energy electrons and protons. Now, it's said to be held in place by Earth's magnetic field. And they say that these belts swell and shrink in response to incoming energy disturbances from the Sun. Now, they say that these were discovered in 1958. But I guarantee you there's been knowledge of this for a lot longer than that. Go, going along with all the other secrets they keep from the masses. However, scientists only discovered two belts, an inner and an outer belt, that extend up to about 25,000 miles above the Earth's surface. New findings here this past year, however, changed the game dramatically because Professor Daniel Baker from the University of Colorado, Boulder, him and his team 
used twin Van Allen probes launched in 2012 to discover a third transient storage ring is what they're calling it. This is a different ring now. Now, how many other rings are out there? This is just what they're telling us. Isn't it comforting to know that there's these rings around this planet locked in place, stopping things? They say that it's all to keep, you know, the radiation out in these bad energies. They could take out satellites and all this. They say it changes with the weather that's coming in from space. But it's been a mystery. This whole Van Allen thing continues to be. And now they find a new belt. This is big information. And mainstream media is not out there running with it whatsoever. So I thought it was pretty interesting. And prior to this, scientists assumed that electrons making it into the upper atmosphere atmosphere of the planet would be dispersed by air molecules but it looks like these particles don't even get that far because of this new newly discovered for us that is invisible electron shield now they're trying to to determine how this was formed and get more answers for this puzzling phenomenon but it's pretty cool and it's not something you hear every day. And when it comes to, you know, belts around this planet that are locked in the place, hmm, it's pretty interesting stuff. All right. As you see, they've discovered recently a invisible, um, they call it a Star Trek force field, which don't, really pay attention to what he's um you know what he's saying in in the video but just to give you a context of what they've discovered an invisible force field that is around the earth so we're looking at it from a worldly standpoint first and we're saying that hey they've discovered this so is it possible that the bible have has already spoke on some of these things that we are just now discovering in the book of Daniel I think it's Daniel 12 4 God's word tells us that um, knowledge shall increase he told Daniel to seal up the book until the um, end of the time matter of fact let's go there first let's read it I didn't have this. Um, in my notes. But. Since we're on the subject. Let's go there and see what it says. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. But thou O Daniel shut up the words. And seal the book. Even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So we look at that, we see how technology and the advancements of technology, how they have increased um, since this book has opened up, the book of Daniel, and also the Bible in itself. You know, this so with a cell phone, I mean, a cell phone, something that pretty much fits in the palm of your hand, you pretty much have the word at your fingertips as far as knowledge and stuff. Now, yes, you have to weed through a lot of um, a lot of stuff to get you know saying to the truth, because there's a lot of garbage out there also. But we see how the scriptures are speaking on that, and how it's coming alive right in front of our eyes. Now, let's go back to Romans chapter one. Verse, starting at verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Salvation, the kingdom of God was uh, brought to the I mean, excuse me, the um, Jews first. They rejected Jesus Christ. That brought salvation to the Gentiles. Giving salvation to the entire wor world. That was part of God's plan. 
verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Born-again believers, they live by the faith of Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. And it goes from faith to faith. My faith is in Jesus Christ, and somebody will watch this video, hopefully, and either their faith will be strengthened, or a seed will be planted, or somebody, hopefully, will be brought to salvation because of my faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That used to be me. I used to be unrighteous. And God had his wrath upon me already because I was in sin. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. So he's saying, I've shown you the wickedness that lies in your heart. I've shown you the wickedness that's in this world and what are, what are the, um, the fruits of it. And we see that all around us in the world today. Verse 20. Now listen to this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power in God it, so that they are without excuse. So right there, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. As you just seen in the video, God allowed man, allowed us to find that invis invisible um, force field that is around the earth so that nobody is, is without excuse it's amazing the different things that we are um that are being revealed to us by god almighty in heaven and he's doing that for that exact reason right there it goes on so that they are without excuse so nobody on this earth can have an excuse when they go to um for in front of um in front of the throne for judgment because he he has shown you these things he's shown me i mean it didn't take it didn't take all that for me to get saved, but I mean, nonetheless, you know, he's revealed different stuff to me. He's revealed different stuff to you. We all come from um from different backgrounds and everything, different cultures and stuff. So it takes different things for him to reveal to us of why uh, we are sinners and we need the grace and mercy and and love of Jesus Christ. Verse twenty one, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts, excuse me, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. We are delivered from darkness, the power of darkness, by Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus Christ, by being born again. Excuse me. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So we see right there how important the blood of Jesus Christ is for the forgiveness of our sins. Back in the Old Testament, they did animal sacrifices. But that was just a foreshadow of Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice to wash away our sins. So if you're trying to put yourself back under the Old Testament covenant, then how are you washing away your sins? Because you're not sacrificing animals. And that's not good enough in God's eyes. Verse 15. Who is the image, talking about Jesus Christ, of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? 
who is the image of the invisible God. The fullness of the Godhead dwell in bodily form, and that was Jesus Christ. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 For great is the mystery of godliness. As a matter of fact, let's go there. So you get an understanding of who Jesus Christ really is. The first, yeah, first Timothy three sixteen. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. That's speaking of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Now let's jump back over to Colossians, verse fifteen. Who is the image of the invisible God? It's referring to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. God Almighty who dwells in heaven. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Listen to this. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he before all things and by him all things consist. Now there we have another scripture giving us confirmation that all things were created by Jesus Christ. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now, isn't, wouldn't that force field, as the video said, wouldn't it be a form of power that's protecting us? And then we have in scriptures right there, it says, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Now, I know that's, I know that's referring to um, Ephesians chapter 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But that force field, that's still, that's something that God created. We see who Jesus Christ is. God manifests in the flesh. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I'll read that again. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Um, First Corinthians, First Corinthians, Chapter Two, Verse Nine. Before I um, speak on this scripture, an invisible force field that's around this earth. All these things that. Excuse me, that we see that God has created. They're nothing compared to what He has for those who love Him. It's nothing compared to what God has for those who are born again. And the beautiful thing about it is. Salvation is available to anybody. So nobody can say, hey, he had more money than I had, or she had more money than I had, so she was able to do more. Or they had more opportunities because I got married and I had kids and they were single, so they could do more good works than I could. Doing good things doesn't get you into heaven. So see, the playing field is level and equal for everybody. 
See, that's the beauty of, of God. That's a just God, a righteous God, to give the opportunity for everybody to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it reads, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. That's why people are searching so much. They're searching for answers. They want to know. That it's, it's our nature. That's the way God created us. He created all these things because he knew that we would wonder and, uh, and marvel all these things about where does all this come from so that we could so that we would seek and search him and he revealed himself to us through Jesus Christ in the spirit what it said but God have revealed them unto us by his spirit and what we know now <laughs> what we know now is nothing compared to what we would know when we get to heaven but you got to make it there to know these things. You can have all these questions you want. But if you go to hell, then you won't have none of the answers that you're, that you're searching and seeking for. God has some great things in store for you. But it's just a question of, do you really, really want to know? Are you going to accept this free gift of salvation? Gift of grace? The gift of repentance. Repentance is a gift. Because if it wasn't for repentance, we would all be continue doing what we're doing, living um, a willful, habitual, sinful lifestyle, headed straight to hell. But by His grace, He had mercy upon us. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 7. Verse 49. Listen to this. This is a very interesting verse. Acts chapter 7 verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Have not my hand made all these things? I'm going to go on. I'm going to read verse 51 too. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Now I want to go back to verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Now if we put that in context of what we can understand in our finite um, finite minds. If he is saying that earth is his footstool. And we say he, see how big is, big earth is. Let's compare us on this earth. And how big a footstool is to us. Now we can take a footstool. We can break it down. We can see that um, it has so many screws that go in here. We understand the complexity of that footstool. And we see how complex earth is in a whole, how everything ties in together. But yet, our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, He says that earth is His footstool. It's interesting there. So that means we, that if you serve the Most High, that you serve a mighty, mighty big God. <laughs> So if earth is his footstool, what else does he have in store for those who trust and believe in him through faith in Jesus Christ? Or do you just want um, want this life right here? And you think this is it. But he has so much more for you. And it's available to you. 
if you just repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, his resurrection. It's a free gift. The plan field is level for everybody. And as he told us, so nobody is without excuse. That's why all these things are being revealed to us. That's why all these things, this knowledge that we read in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 is coming about. Because God wishes that no man shall perish. Now let's go to the Old Testament. I want to get um, get one more witness. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. Again it says, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Again, that's two witnesses testifying that earth is the Lord's footstool. We're all without excuse. Today is a day of salvation, as you see in the video. Invisible force field, as you seen with the scriptures God already told us that these things he revealed these things to us in his word because he wants us to know the truth he gave us the truth in his word the question is are you going to believe or are you going to deny the truth today is the day of salvation repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ God bless you in Jesus Christ's name. And I pray that I see you in heaven. Stay focused for Jesus.